Welcome back to the finale of What If Ventress Rejoined the Jedi Order. Thank you to those of you who watched the other two parts. To recap what happened in those videos in case you haven't seen them, Ventress had managed to return to the Jedi Order after the insistence of Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi and the Council had tried to fake the death of Ventress. The Sith had not been fooled by the plan and Dooku captured the forgotten Ark Trooper Echo to counter Republic strategies. So Ventress responded by recruiting the Night Sisters, capturing Maul and Savage. The Jedi hoped that they can reveal the answers they needed. As the Venator class Star Destroyer poured into the docking platform, the cages of the Zabraks were placed into the possession of the Jedi and moved to the Republic military base. The Jedi were not blind enough to realize that the formidable brothers could not be broken, and they decided to dispatch Ventress to strike a deal. The Dath of Miriam brings her Night Sisters, and Talzin promises Maul that he would have his chance to avenge both Sidious and Obi Wan if he told her about Palpatine. Maul bowed to Talzin, and he was about to reveal the true identity of Palpatine when lightsabers ignited behind them. General Grievous had snuck onto the planet with the help of Palpatine, and had arrived in time to thwart the deal. Talzin ordered the others to run as she held him off, but as they exit the area, they see chaos. Palpatine had not been confident in the skills of Grievous and supported the cyborg with a separatist attack. Back inside the Jedi Temple, the Council had been waiting for the Night Sisters to return from their interrogation when an ominous rumbling interrupted their meeting. Admiral Yularen quickly warned of the breach in the Coruscant airspace and Yoda and Windu have to sort out a strategy before the lives of those on the surface could be lost. Anakin, Obi-Wan and Ahsoka are tasked with helping the Night Sisters when the Jedi Knight received a desperate message from Chancellor Palpatine. Anakin rushed off to the Senate building as Obi-Wan and Ahsoka tracked the escaped wall in Savage, right to the depths of Coruscant's works district. The Zabraks are still injured from their skirmish on Florum and the Jedi ambushed them using the maze of buildings, then ordered them to reveal the truth behind the Sith. Maul listened to the cries of the Night Sisters and thought he could deal with Obi-Wan later and revealed that Palpatine was the one behind everything. The Jedi quickly tried to find Anakin, but all lines of communication have been cut off and Obi-Wan orders the clones to take the brothers back to their cell as they look for Anakin. Jumping aboard a civilian speeder, the Jedi burst through the window of the Chancellor's office but find it empty. The Jedi then run to the temple immediately and Yoda deploys several council members to search for the missing Jedi and Sith. But emerging from the temple, they suddenly find the clones pointing their lightsabers in their direction as a giant holographic figure of Palpatine emerged to execute Order 66. In the midst of it all, Dooku and Grievous looked up from the battle with the Night Sisters and felt betrayed that they had not been a part of Sidious's plans. The Jedi take advantage by using them to block the fire from the clones and the droids on their way to Grievous's flagship. Seizee Tin cleverly diverts the squadron of Arc-170 starfighters away from the Jedi's intended target and the Jedi home in on the Dreadnought. Most sustained heavy damage but make it into the primary hangar bay assisted by the Night Sisters and battle the droids. The presence of Windu is a massive boost as he effortlessly destroyed everything blocking their path and guided them to the turbo lifts. Ascending into some kind of throne room, they see Palpatine talking to Anakin and the Sith Lord accused the Jedi of collaborating with dark entities to take down the Senate. Obi-Wan pointed his lightsaber at the Chancellor and told him that the truth had been revealed by Maul and the activity of the clones, something that Anakin had not been aware of due to the distraction of Palpatine. The Chancellor sensed the change in mood of Anakin and his unerring confidence in his manipulation ebbed away as he blasted out of the ship and onto an escape pod. The Jedi follow Palpatine in the remaining escape pods, but as they enter the atmosphere of Coruscant, Windu orders them to jump out before Palpatine incinerated their pods from the ground. The Sith then try to make it appear as if Dooku was the real enemy, but no one was convinced. All of the Jedi and the Night Sisters charge the remaining Sith and the clones, and despite their immense power, the Sith fell to the floor. The sound of Maul's scream of delight echoed into the air but those were silenced by Anakin, who put an end to the Zabraks for his master. The death of Talzin in the final battle had drained the energy from the Night Sisters, and they could not respond to the Jedi, so retreated back to their caves on Dathomir. Ventress, however, chose to remain on Coruscant, and even though she had not personally exacted revenge on Dooku, her task had been complete. The Jedi gave her a new role, helping Master Terra Sunube, and occasionally Quinlan Vos in Coruscant's underworld. 
Ventress was always meant to be a Jedi. That is it for what if Ventress rejoined the Jedi Order. If you enjoyed this what if, please like this video, turn on that notification bell, click that subscribe button on this channel, as well as on my other channel what if films. And as always, leave a comment about what if you'd all like to see next, and how I can improve my videos. Thank you all very much for watching, and see you next time.